you know, there's people outside the United States that are also interested in the fact that we do have the death penalty in this country. And they're also working to stop the death penalty in the United States, even though they might not live here. Uh, tonight, we're going to have uh, Tracy Lamore and Dave Parkinson uh, from the Canadian Coalition to abolish the death penalty. You're going to share with you. So Tracy and Dave, you guys want to come on up? Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, and thank you, Bill, and all the names. It's an honor to meet in person the people that we've seen for 20 years online and worked with for 20 years, that we feel our family from another country virtually. So we're just really, 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 truly grateful to be here and it is family. And yeah, so we're gonna try to keep it, our, our story's fairly short. We have four or five little stories that we think are really important about the, what we've done and Canada. Well, we have hundreds of stories, yeah, but we've tried to compress it down. <laughs> there was a lot of years with the death penalty, as you all know, a lot of prisoners. Basically, our work, um, one of the first things that we did was... Well, well uh, it started back yeah, in 1998. Yes. I was surfing the internet. I can't remember exactly what for, but I accidentally stumbled across Cyberspace Inmates, which was a web page uh, that back in 98 would have pen pal requests for prisoners. And I... <laughs> You know, we'd heard about the death penalty. We'd had a college radio show a few years earlier, so we'd heard about the case of Mumia Abu Jamal, um, and we'd spoken out, you know, on the issue of capital punishment with regards to him. But we weren't really that familiar with what it all entailed. We were mentioning earlier that um, originally we would have thought we thought we were pretty educated on stuff. We were activists on anti-racism issues, anti-police abuse, government abuses, all kinds of stuff. But at one time we would have thought that, oh, you know, back in 1998 when we first started reading about this. Maybe there's a hundred people on death row, and I'm going to know the names of most of them if I look at it. They're going to be those big serial killers you all hear about. And, and we were really shocked. So first we were found out about the innocence case that Dave's yeah. going to tell you about. So but then what drew us into it more was we were shocked to find out that, and I think most people don't realize that the death penalty itself is not what, you know, what they think it is. And the people that are on death row aren't necessarily who they think they are when they think about the worst of the worst. So. Okay, so... Um, after we came across the cyberspace inmates page, I was looking through it, seeing some pen pal requests. Then I came across this one from Jimmy Dennis. It basically said, I'm not looking for a pen pal. I don't need a relationship. The way I have to communicate with the outside world. Can somebody please help me? I'll send you my case information, whatever you need, but I'm innocent. I need to get out of here. So I called Tracy over the computer. I'm like, look at this. What, what's going on with this? So we decided to write Jimmy and he We're said like, how innocent can this guy be i don't yeah. know why but something called because we've never seen out. something like this before so we wrote him directly he'd sent us reams of material case documents 19 page handwritten two-sided letter and he says that he never had done that before I mean, for something when he got that letter something called him to and he and we always been communicating with people but he wrote a 19 page two-sided letter sent us about this much legal document just to start and just from what which was the most recent court decision and just reviewing a, a quick review of all the information he sent we realized that this man is innocent he does need help so we figured well the cyberspace inmates he has to resort to using his pen pal service a paid, to pen, pal service. paid pen pal service yeah. to get his word out there i was just learning how to make web page and said okay Let's start put up a web page for him, get him to send us more stuff. We'll put his case info online. We'll start so a campaign. So funnily enough, we didn't even there. know we were going to do that. I remember, yeah. which I mean, it's funny now. We're like, oh, we were so, we have to let the world know. What are we going to do to help? So we made a web page. It's the early days of the internet yeah. when there wasn't a lot of stuff. That it, it actually ended up being on CNN and all this stuff because there was not really prisoner presence in the uh, in the internet at anyway, that time. Anyway, so yeah. so what happened from there is we decided, well, this can't be an isolated incident because, as Tracy said, we thought there may be. 100 people on death row and they're all notorious serial killers and everyone will know who they are when we looked into it and found out there was more than 3,000 people on death row we were completely floored yeah. so we decided at that point since we knew this couldn't be just an isolated incident we started reaching out to other death we row prisoners for a and other organization that might be fighting the death penalty yeah. and we couldn't find any it there was amnesty, amnesty international but canada didn't have any national organization against capital punishment. And being the closest neighbors, you know, with a border attached, and we were so shocked to find out what was happening just below us, we felt like, you know, we really need to let people know about this. So, so at that point, we founded the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty, and we have the page for Jimmy Dennis, and we started reaching out to um, other groups and to other prisoners across the U.S. and said, look, if you need to get your information out there, we'll help you put it online. We'll make a basic web page for you and put it up. 
Now, within a couple of months of starting this and getting Jimmy's webpage online, we have the case of Canadian Stan Falder, who was executed in Texas uh, by George Bush when he was still governor. Um, so being the Canadian coalition, we reached out to uh, Mr. Falder and we put up a web page for him. The issue with Mr. Falder was he had never had his consular rights respected, so he was on death row in Texas for more than almost 20 years. And his family, Canada, didn't even know about it because he was embarrassed to tell his family, so he didn't want to reach out. And the, the consulate had never made sure he had a lawyer or anything. So later yeah. on, when retroactively they realized that he had never had consular assistance, they were trying to you know, stop the execution based on that and uh, ultimately that failed but we were able to, we started and, a boycott and, of Texas that made international And, and we reached out to um, a group in Canada like the Innocence Project called AIDWIC. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the case of Reuben Carter, Reuben the Hurricane Carter. So he moved up to Canada and after, his, after he got out of prison in New Jersey and he was working with AIDWIC, the Association in Defense of the Wrongly Convicted. So together with AIDWIC we started working on the Falder case. Um, Aidwick sent some top lawyers and like a delegation down to Texas to try and negotiate his release. Um, at the end of the day, it did fail. Unfortunately, he was executed, and, but, but we were able to raise the profile in his case to a whole new level. We launched the tourist boycott of Texas, which basically we just thought of in our basement in Toronto. And yeah, we we, we said yeah. Out. Texas's slogan was Texas. It's like another country. And we said yeah, like, like Iraq, like Iraq, Iraq like Sudan, Iran, the Sudan, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, yeah. And using that little they like a whole lot slogan. of the country quite lot, so and like we that. found out later when we launched it because we launched the the tourist international boycott. tourist boycott of texas and we found out a few years later that the texas tourism board actually spent over 12 million dollars in a counter campaign that. they came up with this thing the canuck box they'd accept canadian dollar on par a whole bunch of right stuff at the same time so we realized at this point wow okay so we've got their attention now um, at, the, at this point, we continued. We were growing the web page. A dozen so prisoners. That's when we at first. started making the. I want basically at one point we had um, out of the almost four thousand prisoners on death row, we had actual web pages where they had sent our writings, documentation, case stuff for a thousand prisoners, mm -hmm. and then a further thousand were represented in our pen pals. So we literally had half of America's death row had our had our mailing address, about, about and we're writing a, as an asking for pen. Yeah. And at that time, it was before we had our son Cassidy who was sitting here videoing, and it was a, like a part-time job that it was. You know, all, you guys know how much time mm -hmm. it takes. We would sit there, we'd get home from work, and from five o'clock at night till ten or eleven, we'd both be sitting on computers, answering prison letters, making web pages, writing to media. You know. Anyway, ultimately, the, uh, along came Arizona, and they tell that story. Okay, so we continued doing this and, and getting some media attention as well, and trying prisoners. to raise the profile of uh, all the prisoners that we had web pages for, trying to work with their families or their advocates on the outside, helping getting out media releases to local press. Um, in Texas, there was a case of Shaka Sankofa, Gary Graham. Yeah. Um, he was trying to raise the profile of his Shaka. case. He was wrong, wrongly convicted. Um, so we put up a web page for him as well, and we were in, in touch with him shortly. And if anybody has not read, I mean, I can, I still to this day cannot get through the final words of Shaka Sankapa yeah. without crying. And when I talk to people about my work against the death penalty, I pull up that, I pull up Shaka's words. We weren't close with Shaka. I don't think we ever spoke personally. We just, he'll tell the no, story of our connection by, about what, you know, what we did. Yeah. But. The, those words, and he, like he said, uh, the fight that we're in is so vitally important. And if you need some rejuvenation, a little bit of anger, a little bit, of, a little bit of why we do this, the last words of Shaka Senkoff are there online. Read them. Okay. Um, so we we've spoken with uh, we've spoken with Shaka, and uh, we suggested to him that if uh, Governor by mail, Bush by mail by mail him. by mail, but uh, we suggested if Governor Bush wasn't going to. Uh, uh, let the evidence sentence, be heard. If and he let the evidence gonna, be heard. Uh, yeah, if he was uh, going to execute an innocent man, basically, we we, we uh, suggested to Shaka that he challenged the governor. Yeah, sorry. We're married. We've been years. married to all twenty-five years. <laughs> <laughs> it's this kind of work that keeps you together. Yeah. So we'd uh, written him, and we said, uh, if George Bush doesn't have the courage of his convictions, then why don't you put him on his on your witness list and invite him. He said, take one of the names off, of your friends or family off, leave an empty chair, make a formal invitation to the governor. We sent that by FedEx to Shaka the week before he was executed. Yeah, we FedExed it because uh, the execution date was and rapidly then, approaching. And then, tell this part. So we're sitting in our basement in Scarborough, and Jesse Jackson and Bianca Jagger went to visit Shaka. 
and we didn't know if our letter had got to Shaka or we didn't know what you know we hadn't been personal with him so we didn't know how he would take that that suggestion but he was very political mm -hmm. and we knew he wanted to fight that's why we had said that's that let that you know let the president let or let the, the governor let Bush be there and let him hear let him see what he's doing when if he's gonna really execute an innocent man let him view it let him because Shaka was gonna fight he was gonna fight and we said he let Bush fight, see that fight, the he fight let him see that and feel that instead of just seeing somebody saying I'm sorry you know put the needle in and so so we're watching uh, Texas News and there's Jesse Jackson on the nightly news if Governor Bush doesn't have the courage of his convictions and the word, courage. yeah pretty much what we'd said Jesse and Jackson, invited him to the execution and after that these governors accountable to them this is a piece of paper coming across her desk and signature Bush, Bush I'm going home declined, to my family but no, we wanted to put it in their face and after yeah. after that, we uh, there was a few other uh, prisoners Georgia that we worked well. with. Georgia, three um, prisoners did Governor that. Perry. No governor. Three prisoners yeah. did that. No governor uh, accepted the invitation. No. Of course. Um, I wish they would, because I think that would make a difference. And uh, you know, Bush respectfully declined, but we were saying, you know, that says a lot too. So come if you really believe in it. Yeah. Come and what? That's your signature. You kill. It's you doing it. Do it. If that's what you do, you know, and if not, tell the world why you won't sit there and watch it. Yeah. Have the courage of your convictions. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was another. So we wanted to bring it. Know? We wanted to bring it home to them so that it's not just another piece of paper coming across. Your I'd desk. still like to see You're that. You're going to do this. You're going to go home and have nightmares. I'd love to see it, more okay? prisoners do that. I'd love, and the media didn't really pick that up because they kind of gave the governor a pass on it. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see prisoners do that on mass and make governors have to answer that. I'd love to see that. Mm -hmm. That's a really powerful tool. Right? So. Uh, I'm sorry, we're a little scattered here because we don't have anything written down. There's so many experiences that we had over the, the, the decades we've been doing this that it's really hard Arizona. to compress it into I mean, one thing that was important was when Arizona tried to stop prisoners from having any kind of presence right. on the West. So Arizona, uh, they passed uh, well, House Bill 2376, was it? HB yeah. I can remember that. So um, they basically said if you're a prisoner and you have a web page online, we're throwing you in the hole. We're taking so all your privileges. So that third party person mm -hmm. puts information about your site, which obviously a prisoner under sentence of death locked away can't control what we do, right? And I, I was a party in that loss. That's yeah. right. Yeah, it was part C of that as well. CUADP, mm -hmm. stop prisoner rape. Mm -hmm. And there was one other. Or no, it was, no, it was three stop of us, prisoner wasn't rape. It? it was Abe's group and, and it, us. Yeah, and the ACLU. Yeah. And we would so what ACLU, happened is yeah. they they said that yeah the prisoners would be punished for having a presence online and they obviously can't control it. They're in prison. So we basically wrote back to the Department of Corrections and said we're not taking well, we it down. It uh, as a matter of fact, we sent out letters to every single one of the 120 prisoners on Arizona's death row and said hey you want a web page. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, those who didn't respond, we found the info, found the information online and put up a web page anyway, so that every single prisoner in Arizona had a web page. So they couldn't. And we basically wrote the state and said, yeah, "We're not taking it down." Yeah. And at first, it was a bit of an ethical dilemma because the first prisoner wrote us, and they had been told you'll be punished if your page remains online. So they were instructed to write and to ask for their page to be removed. Yeah, and they wrote and us so, back and they said, "You know, you know I, I've been told it'd be removed, but I understand it's." Your web page. I understand. You don't have to if listen. You don't want to take it down. I can't so force you to. One prisoner and he basically said, nudge, respond. nudge, wink, wink. So please we went with it. it yeah. One so, prisoner basically told us, please don't yeah. take it down. It's my only view of the world. I'm getting pen pals. I'm getting friends. I'm getting hope. Mm -hmm. And so then we knew we have responsibility because if we don't take it down, there could be all these prisoners getting further punished, which is, you know, taking away mm -hmm. their lights, their whatever TV, whatever they did have, because we have a web page. So we decided though there's only one way to do that, which is what Dave said, is yeah. that we made it for everybody and for said everybody. now we're willing to fight. And, and we and yeah, as we, Dave let the said, we took of it to court with the help of the ACLU. And ultimately, um, it's in a case in a precedent setting decision that still stands, the Arizona Supreme Court judge ruled in our favor mm -hmm. and said to do otherwise would do irreparable harm to the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. And that for and that still stands. Mm -hmm. So that was a precedent setting case. Abe too, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, Abe, I give him applause, not us. He was part of this too. And the ACLU. So, and the ACLU did it as well. So, I mean, those are just, I, I mean, there's so many stories. Just to give you an idea to. of why Canada and the state Canada will often ask why the Canadian coalition is the death penalty. We don't have the death penalty in Canada. Well, but we anymore. do extradite, or we used to yeah. extradite Until people to countries with the death penalty. There was a case of seven a teeth facing extradition to Washington. That was 1999. Mm -hmm. And we, again, in conjunction with Aidwick, we'd spoken to them about the case, and the Aidwick lawyers got on it. And they, they're they're comprised of some of Canada's top lawyers. Um, like Edward Greenspan, James Locker, you may not know these names, but they're like the Barry Shecks of Canada. 
Um, so they got on the case. Uh, we had contacted uh, also the Italian government, who at the time was working towards abolition. We got an invite to the Italian embassy in Ottawa. We sat down and told them what the predicament was. They were actually granted intervener status in the Supreme Court case in Canada. The first been allowed to speak on a domestic Canadian case. They came in, um, spoke about Canada's international obligations under international law. Our Supreme Court ruled, yep, you cannot extradite a Canadian to a country that has capital punishment without assurances from that government that they will not be executed. And interestingly, it was, yeah, interestingly, it was based not even so much on the idea of justice as on the idea of we can't have something called right of return. So if you leave your country, you're Canadian, you're allowed, you have the right of return. They can't stop you from coming back. So the court, the argument was made, wait a minute, if we're sending somebody to be executed, we just remove their right to return. Mm -hmm. And so that's so been a trying Supreme Court, Supreme well, Court yeah, since that's a Supreme yeah. Court now, so Canada no longer extradites anyone to face capital punishment anywhere. So I think that's pretty much and, um, okay, anything else you want Well, to again, we started this all because of Jimmy Dennis Jimmy back in 1998. And he was that, we forgot to tell you, Jimmy was freed in 2007. Jimmy's out. Woo! Jimmy's freed. He spoke here last year. Yeah, that's right. For those of you who were here last year, you remember Jimmy. You saw right? Jimmy sure. here last we year. We watched all this live, actually. Yeah, we were watching this live we watched online this live, last year. From, so we from heard Toronto, the music so. and, yeah. So, um, <laughs> all of it. Um, so, Jimmy, again, when Jimmy was wrongfully convicted back in, uh, well, it was 1991, 92, when it, when it all began. But he was uh, an up-and-coming uh, R&B singer in Philadelphia in the music scene. Um, they were ready to get signed when all this happened and took him down. Um, and apparently, I guess the record company signed another act, Boys to Men. I think so. Yeah. So, um, Jimmy lost out in his career with his wrongful conviction. He's been in jail for over 20 years, but he hasn't lost his voice. He's back out. His single's now available for download on iTunes. And, and he's going to get some major media attention right now. That's going to blow your mind. Yeah, we've got, we can't. But, disclosure, but it's like, yeah. And that's all You're going to hear about it. Jimmy, and so, Jimmy's fight ain't over until he, we see him accept. So we're going to play for you, You Said, I just have it on my phone. This is a recently released song, You Said, written, recorded, produced, everything by Jimmy Dennis, who spent more than 20 years on death row in Philadelphia, and we were with him since 1998, which is when he was five years in, we fought that battle with him. Mm -hmm. And so it gives me great joy and pleasure. I don't know how well you can hear it, but please appreciate the song, You Said. Can we get more audio on this? Can we turn the speaker just, just put it up and right up to the microphone. Technical difficulties, please stand by. <laughs> Sounds great.
download it on iTunes. I was his advocate with, for his brother and sister, and now I'm his publicist, so download it on iTunes. <laughs> and just an ending, all I gotta say is, well, you heard it, some, some things have a happy ending. We're gonna win this fight. You're gonna win this fight. We're in Canada, you guys are gonna win this fight. There's gonna be a happy ending to this. Um, questions? Yeah, if anybody has any questions, I'm sorry, I've got something in my eye. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Can't really hear that song with a long road. <laughs> yeah, any questions? No? We already talked too much. <laughs> thank you so much. It's great. It's great. No, thank, thank you guys, because like I said, yeah. we're up in Canada. I mean, we can only do so much. You guys are on the front lines. You guys are, are, are taking it head on. And without you guys, we wouldn't have had the inspiration to keep going. Um, do you have anything in the works right now? What are you guys up to? Not that you're not up to a lot right in now. In terms of CCADP? Complete revamp of the webpage, because the webpage was like, in the old days when we could create the webpage, I mean, now I don't even know HTML. We did that in like Netscape in the days Netscape when you could just type. Netscape composer just you know. putting it together. So we have a few people have offered to redo it for us, but I mean, we had like 2,000, I mean, it's such a gigantic. Yeah. So if, if you want like to see what our, our work to help us at, at its height, you just go to the <laughs> Internet Archives, the Wayback Machine, ccadp.org. You can see everything that was up there. And we're working on and updating it with The server was basically deleted, what, 2010? Yeah. It all went down, but it's all on the Wayback Machine. Um, we still got our uh, Facebook page. We still got stuff on YouTube. If and you want to see some of the news appearances, some updates and changes. you don't want to see the news appearances. Nancy Grace yelling at me. That was horrible. Yeah, Dave on Nancy Grace, Google that. <laughs> but yeah, thanks, thanks to you guys, and especially uh, thanks for putting on this journey of hope. Thanks for doing this every year, and hopefully we'll be able to get down here in a year or two more when they finally abolish capital punishment yeah. right across this country.